fine line. It's a very thin line. Is it red? Was it too red? I'm sorry. Lev Nishbar, broken heart, which the, the Torah praises. We mentioned Avraham Avinu, uh, Rabbi Natanza writes that the last letters of Lev, Nishbar, Vinidke, Elohim Lo spell the word Avraham. Avraham Avinu was the first one who came before Hashem. The Torah hadn't been given yet. What did he had? Nothing. His, his father owned a department store of idols. What, the whole world was against him. What did he have? He had Lev Nishbar. He came to Hashem from the, He was searching to find the Creator. He, he was, first he thought it was the sun, then the moon, until he tried everything, and by process of elimination, he started crying, Creator, whoever, whoever you are, wherever you are, reveal yourself to me so that I could express my, express my appreciation, so I could say thank you. I don't know who to thank for my life, for anything that I have. And that was when Hashem revealed Himself to him. So that's Lev Nishbar, and the other word is Atzvut. Atzvut. It says right before Hashem sent the flood to the world to wipe out the whole world, it says, Vayit Atzev Elibo. Hashem became depressed, and then He went ahead and wiped out the whole world. Atzvut is complete destruction. Again, Atzvut is a, a negativity, a, help, a hopelessness, an anger, a resentment, you know, all, all of those feelings. So I was saying, Rabbi Nachman says that in this physical world, you know, to us, it's, uh, the way I'm describing it, there are two opposites. One is one of the highest forms of holiness, and one is one of the f- worst forms of Tum'ah. In this world of Bechira, in this world of free choice, these two are side by side, and they're like twins. They look almost identical. You look at two people coming into shul in the morning, both of them are looking very down. Both of them are looking very weak, like it's the end of the world. But one of them is coming in with a feeling of emunah, that Baruch Hashem, I woke up this morning. Baruch Hashem, I'm able to come to shul. Baruch Hashem, I have the opportunity to speak to Hashem himself directly. Wow, there's a chance. There's a good chance that today I'm going to be helped. And the other one is walking in, angry, grumpy, doing this only because I, don't, I have to, I don't want to do it, I don't want to be here. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's anybody listening on the other line, you know. I don't think there is a Hashem, or if there is a Hashem, He certainly doesn't have any kindness, because my life, I haven't seen any, any goodness or kindness, what's, you know, that, all of that negativity and anger and resentment, etc., etc. Rabbi Nachman says that it's easy, if a person isn't careful, and if a person doesn't learn enough about emuna, about bitachon, it's easy to slide from lev nishbar into atzvut. Therefore, therefore, he said to his students, I give you permission for one hour a day, maximum, usually, maximum, to speak to Hashem, in your own words, to make this cheshbon hanefesh, to examine yourself, and even realize your faults, things you're doing wrong, and, and all kinds, to be in that mode of lev nishbar. Whereas the rest of the day, once you finish that, once you finish doing that cheshbon nefesh and saying and apologizing to Hashem for whatever mistakes I've made, the ones that I know about, the ones that I don't know about, I'm very sorry, and I hope and pray that if you help me, Hashem, I'll try not to repeat my mistakes, not to do that, once a person finishes that Hidbodadut, the rest of the day, Rabbi Nachman said, only simcha, only simcha. Stay a billion miles away from that Lev Nishbar. Then you can't get the benefits of what you can do with the Lev Nishbar when you ask for specific prayers like in Shemot Asrei or when you read Tehillim or something like that. You're saying that you should only do that during that... Hitpodidut. <coughs> maybe, maybe... <laughs> If a person is careful and if a person knows what they're doing, they can apply it also when they're reading Tehillim or, or again, when, right, when they're praying, when they say the words, Ve'ozer Dalim. But in other words, to know, to limit it. That this is not something to just do freely. It's dangerous. It's very, dangerous. It's very special, but also dangerous, risky. Don't dwell on it. Exactly. 
because sometimes you don't know where it's coming from. There's a guy in a long white beard who's saying that you should do this, and you don't realize that he's the angel of death. He's doing it to bury you. He's coming to you as if he's a real religious guy. And he says, you know, you're, not, you're supposed to be humble. You're supposed to realize you're nothing. You've wasted your whole life. You haven't done a single good... And he's doing it not to make you humble. He's doing it to bury you, to push you into that place of giving up on yourself. Um, I just want to mention this idea of you know, coming in front of Hashem and praying to Him and asking Him for, let's say, a gift and coming from this area that's a little different. Look, you know, look. Amen. You know, coming coming to Hashem where you know, as a gift, or, or, or you know, coming somewhere where you, where you don't have anything, and, and you're asking for for something. Is there? A, I feel like there's a point where, after doing that on a daily basis, it gets kind of watered down. Is there any way to um, to keep that fresh? Very, very, very good question. Because the, the, Torah, the Torah says that in order for your prayer to be effective, it has to be fresh. It has to be new. And, and there's two ways to accomplish that. One way is the more you learn, the more you study, and you, you read about new arguments or new ways to negotiate with Hashem or new things that you learn about Hashem or about coming close to Hashem. The more you're learning new things, you can apply that in your prayer. You can, and that's considered to be the most special, special form of prayer. Rabbi Nachman says, from the time of the Beit HaMikdash, there wasn't any pleasure that Hashem receives like the pleasure when a person takes what they learn and, and convert it into a prayer. We learn in the Gemara and the Chumash, wherever it is, we learn things about Hashem or about the Jewish, about ourselves, and we use that to form a tefillah to Hashem. That based on what I just learned about what Hashem likes or what Hashem does or what Hashem doesn't like, therefore I'm asking you, Hashem, please, ABC. You understand? That's number one. When it comes to Torah also, this term that you use, new, fresh, is one of the most important things in Judaism. It's brought that uh, when it comes to the study of Torah, one of the highest, one of the greatest accomplishments is if a person could be zochet to, <coughs> to chidushe Torah. Uh, when a person comes up with a new idea in Torah, a new explanation of something, or a new, that's considered to be a tremendous tikkun for the person's neshama. <coughs> or if the person's parents or grandparents have passed away, one of the things that brings about the greatest aliyat neshama is when a child or a grandchild is zochet to be mechadesh in Torah to bring forth a new idea in Torah. Now, how many people are on a level to do that? Unfortunately, many of us, <coughs> we're first, to every page of Torah is new to us, you know, so we're not ready yet to be, to be coming up with new, bringing forth new ideas. So Rabbi Natan Zal writes in Likut HaLachot that when a person studies the Torah every day like it's brand new, like he's doing it for the first time, no, it's, we're, this week we're reading Parshat Tzav. This isn't last week's Parshat Tzav, last year's. This is a whole new thing. I'm opening the book for the first time to see what is Hashem going to tell me now from Parshat Tzav. I'm learning this for the first time, looking in the Rashi like it's the first time because the Torah is spiritual. Spiritual means it's infinite. There's no such thing that I, I learned it already. There's always new things you can see in it, in each thing. When a person learns it with that attitude, that's also called Chidushe Torah. That's also where the Torah is new to him, brand new to him every day. And when you do that, you're going to see that it affects your tefillah in a tremendous way. With the tefillah also, a person walks into shul, <coughs> I'm putting on tefillah now for the 650th time. Then it has a certain value. A person walks into shul in the morning, I'm putting on my tefillah now for the first time. Erasing, no pad, no yesterday. Asher anochim et savecha, hayom. There's 10, 20 places in the Torah where the Torah mentions that hayom word. And Rabbi Natan says, why does it say that? Ma hayom? Asher anochim et savecha. Why does it say hayom? 
וגם אוסס, בכל יום ויום יהיו בעיניך כחדשים. Because Hashem wants that every day in religion, today, that there's only today, there were no yesterdays, I erase all the yesterdays from my memory, and there's no tomorrow, because I don't know if I'm going to be around tomorrow. So there's only this today. This is my first and might be my last Arvit that I'm praying right now. When a person does it with that attitude, that, that gives tremendous joy to us. Just like anybody, a person buys a new car, a new anything, a new shirt, you put it on for the first time, it's a high, it's a high. After a couple of weeks, months, you put it on, you don't have that. If you want to experience that high in your tefillah, and you want Hashem to enjoy that high, you, you have to do it chadash, brand new, brand new. Hello, also, um, I wanted to ask uh, two questions about his photos. I heard from someone once that um, in their photos they say that they thank Hashem for things before they actually receive them. For instance, someone is in is in feeling well; they're in bad health. They make sure to thank Hashem for giving them good health, quote unquote. Is is that um, sort of demanding from Hashem in a way? I feel I feel like you shouldn't you shouldn't tell Hashem something before. Before, Before it happens. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? I, I don't know in what context the person was saying it at the time. I'm saying usually a pro- what you can say and what you're supposed to say, it says with this hit bodedut, which we said is lev nishbar, a person's doing it, right? you never end off on that note. You never leave it at that. The way that a person's supposed to complete a hit bodedut is by saying, and now that you gave me the opportunity, Hashem, to express all of these things that I need and that I want and that, I, and that I'm, I'm feeling bad about, I'm confident, I'm confident that you're listening to my prayer and I'm confident that you're going to help me. I'm positive. The Torah teaches us, Ki filat kol peh. even me, even with all the things that I've done wrong and I'm doing wrong and I'm going to do wrong, still, a daddy, a daddy is able to look away. You know, and a daddy... A daddy wants to give and he wants to help. So I'm confident that you're definitely going to help me. You're going to, you know, that <coughs> to end off on that note. But whether to say that, to say it like I got it already, that I'm not sure. Or even, let's say, the other way around. Let's say um, I once heard from someone that uh, they were looking for marriage and they, and, um, they went to a rabbi to ask, what, what do I do to get a wife? And... The, the Rav told them, make sure you thank Hashem every day for not being married. And then a, a little while after that, they were Accepting able to... Accepting that you're not married. Accepting things with the Hava. Also yeah. true. Also true. You know, it's because, again, that's showing that I'm not coming from a place of anger, resentment, negativity. I know that if, if up until this minute I'm not married yet, could be there's a reason. Could be it's to my benefit. Could be I wasn't ready. But at the same time, the Torah teaches us that the right thing is yes to be married. So therefore, I'm asking you, Hashem, please, thank you for what's been till now. But now I'm begging you. I need it. Exactly. Exactly. Question. Uh, you know, in Tikka Avod, it says that nothing stands in the way of our son. Right? So how does that apply practically in life? Does that mean that a person is capable of doing anything if there's unlimited potential? Or what does that really mean? To a large degree, Yes. To a large degree, yes. The potential of a human being is incredible, awesome, infinite. And when it, this is one of the topics that there are hundreds of pages, hundreds of pages in Rabbi Nachman's teachings emphasizing the, the significance of Ratzon, this issue of desire, a person really wanting something, but really wanting it with your whole heart, you know, desperately, and expressing that ratzon. There's two parts. There's building up the desire, and there's verbal, putting it into words. <coughs> because all the korbanot in the Beit HaMikdash, all the korbanot, it says, what, what's the purpose? <coughs> L'ratzon l'fnei Hashem. Right? If you take a look in the Chumash, wherever it speaks about the korbanot, the purpose of this korban is L'ratzon l'fnei Hashem. As, as an appeasement to Hashem as an expression of our desire to come close to Hashem, korban, lekarev, to come close. This item of ratzon, 